Hey Luke here again with you and in this video we're going to cover the absolute basics of learning how to hydrofoil. So learning to hydrofoil is a lot of fun, zooming around, floating above the water, it can be it can be awesome and so I thought that this video would really be designed for people that are just about to get into it. So if you're thinking about just starting hydrofoil and you're looking to get into it or you've just started you know, your first couple of attempts, what we'll go through is some of the real core components and principles so that when you get out there you can sort of think okay why is a hydrofoil doing that what do I need how, what do I need to adjust in order to fly or go faster slower things like that if you've got the real understanding of how the hydrofoil works then that can really help as you're progressing so let's get into it so let's start by covering the different components of a hydrofoil so we've got a hydrofoil here it's upside down I'll just flip it over it flies like this so we have a front wing a rear wing a fuselage and a mast. The mast comes up and connects to some sort of base plate or connection plate and onto a board which of course we stand on. Your hydrofoil flies much like an aeroplane so the fo same forces apply. So when the foil is flying it comes under it's got thrust and drag, lift and weight and so the hydrofoil is coming under those same forces. It's a combination of those four factors that make a hydrofoil fly. So how does that translate into the real world? In the real world, we're standing on top of a board. That's the weight of the hydrofoil, including the unit and our weight. Then we need some type of propulsion, so some type of thrust. That might be towing behind a boat. It might be an electronic foil with a small engine in itself. It might be the power of a wave. It might be the power of the wind, so a kite, a sail, a boat and anything that can basically push the hydrofoil forward will generate thrust. While we're actually riding the hydrofoil, oh sorry, before we actually get up on hydrofoil, the board is in the water. So a lot of that weight is forcing displacement of water and it's creating a lot of friction. That creates a huge amount of drag while the foil, while the board is still in touch with the water. But something really remarkable happens, and this is what makes hydrofoil so great, is that as soon as that board lifts up and you lose that friction with the water, all of that drag, or most of the drag, is eliminated and the hydrofoil will fly. So a lot less friction means it needs a lot less thrust in order to continue flying. And so that's why a hydrofoil carving through a wave or you know, a very small wake being you know, created by a, a boat, it can continue to fly because of most of that drag is eliminated. The only drag that's left is the drag that the wings themselves, the mast, is actually creating for itself as it's cutting through the water. So now let's talk a little bit about how the hydrofoil creates lift. So the hydrofoil, shaped like an aeroplane, has a foil shape here. This will actually generate lift in itself. So while the hydrofoil is flat going on you know, a parallel plane with the surface of the water, that shape will help actually allow the foil to lift. The other way that the hydrofoil will lift is actually changing what's called the angle of attack. So essentially leaning the foil up, this will create lift as well. So if the board and the foil is lifting, is, is tilting up, that will create lift and under speed, the foil itself the foil shape will create lift as it's propelling forward. So let's go out in the water and I'll give you a little example. If we put the hydrofoil down into the water, there's a bit of a current today, so if I push it forward, you can see it really tries to fly. But if we just stay stationary with this current, I can actually adjust the angle of attack. You can see it really starts to lift itself up. So that bit of angle of attack is keeping the foil flying at a really slow speed. So a lot of the time, when the board is in contact with the water, we have all of that drag. And so what you can use is the angle of attack to sort of pop the board up and then glide along. So it'll look something like this. You'll lean back, pop it up like that, and then level out. So if you go too much angle of attack for too long, the foil will breach out and drop. So we'll go through that again. If your angle of attack up, it comes up, reaches, and will drop down. And you'll feel you'll literally drop down into the water. Really the purpose of understanding this is just so that if you're finding that your foil is breaching, or you're finding that you can't get off the water surface at all, that's what you can just think about, hey, what is the foil doing under the water while I'm doing that? That's sort of why I'm explaining it. 
It's understanding that the foil will generate more lift for a short period of time if you give it some angle of attack. It will also generate more lift under speed. And so you use the combination of those two things to really angle of attack to get up and then generate speed and then level the foil out to fly. So going back to how it translates to an aeroplane, that really helped me when I was first learning. So thinking about how an aeroplane flies, it can fly flat, going really fast, it tilts up on takeoff, it can roll from side to side, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it turns, it can just lean over, or it can bank and actually go around and, and make a turn. The foil will fly flat like that in a straight line, but we can also roll the board over like this and we can still ride straight along that way if we're leaned up back against it we can still go in a straight line so that might be when you're leaning against a rope or leaning against a kite but then once we want to turn you actually the foil actually turns like that so it's leaning back very slightly on that back foot and it will actually bring the foil around like that that, for me, that visual, visualization of an aeroplane, how it will fly, roll, bank, and, and turn around, I was always running that through my head when I was flying a foil for the first time. I found that it helped me understand that just twisting my upper body or just leaning back and forward isn't the answer to actually being under control of the foil. It's trying to think about how would that small aeroplane fly? I need to sort of lean back and bank that way. I might you know, need to lean back to, to create more lift, flatten out when I'm going fast. All of that really helped me when I was first flying one. So now we understand some of the basics. How does it all work? So we'll be standing on the foil board. The best place to stand typically is just on top of the front wing. So if we've got the front wing here, our back foot is going to be approximately here. It might go back slightly or forward slightly depending on the particular foil. Then we'll be standing with a, with a nice sort of shoulder width wide stance on the board. Standing in this zone should allow you to transfer some weight forwards and backwards just with your upper body. So you should be able to leave your feet in that position and transfer some of that weight to fly or, or you know, change that angle of attack down by leaning forward or back to get the foil up in the first place. Because managing your speed on a foil is really important. As you start to increase speed, the foil will try and lift more and that will try and sort of breach the foil. And so what you'll find is as you're increasing your speed, you need to lean forward and actually hold the foil down. So you're holding that angle of attack down. As you get slow, you might actually need to lean back and get the foil back up. Use your legs, get the foil back up onto flight, stand neutral again, speeding up, lean forward slightly, lean back slightly, depending on management and speed. So that brings me to the size of the wing. So the bigger your hydrofoil, the bigger these wings, the more lift they'll generate at a lower speed. So they generate more lift based on how big they are. And so, and they're measured in square centimeters. So this one is 866 square centimeters. Some foils are up to 2000 square centimeters, down to say 400 square centimeters. And depending on how fast you're going to be going will depend on what wing you want. The wing size, as you increase that speed, if you go too fast, because it's in relationship to the weight that's holding the wing down, if you go too fast, it will actually force you out of the water. On the flip side of that, if you've got too small of a wing and you go too slow, you'll never be able to actually get up out of the water because you, know, you don't have enough thrust in order for that wing, that foil shape to generate enough lift against the weight that you have. And so picking the right wing size is really important for the discipline that you'll be doing and the speed that you'll be going. So in general, maybe towing behind a boat or going kite surfing, they're sort of smaller wings because you can go a bit faster. Surfing might be that as well if you're gonna go down a big wave. Surfing's actually a really good example because you might paddle in slowly, but then as you go down the wave space, you're gonna generate a lot of speed and so that you need to be able to handle that speed and not breach. So the wing size plays, like I said, a really big role in how the foil will work for you depending on what you're going to do with it. What's less important is the shape of the wing. While shapes, the different shapes of the wings definitely have clear benefits, they're not as important as the size of the wing. If the wing is, is curved or a bit fatter and shorter or longer and skinnier, or wider and skinnier, or it, it 
you know, curves up one way or down the other way. Sure, they will definitely play a role, but they, they're not, you know, completely critical. The size, the overall size of the wing is probably the main thing that you need to pay attention to. Hopefully there's some good takeaways in this video. Stoked to get it into foil length. A lot of fun zooming around, weed in your hair. It feels, feels really nice. And of course, riding swells. And there's, there's a lot of variety that you can do with hydrofoiling. So yeah, like I said, that is it for this video. We'll be making more videos for beginner hydrofoilings, more tips and takeaways. So make sure you go and check those out as well. Luke here again with you, and I'll see you in coming videos.